Wheat Chex, Rice Chex, and Good Hot Ralston present Space Patrol! High adventure in the wild, vast reaches of space. Missions of daring in the name of interplanetary justice. Travel into the future with Buzz Corey, Commander-in-Chief of the Space Patrol! In today's transcribed adventure, Buzz and Happy are in their spacesuits, examining the wreckage of a long-lost spaceship that crashed under strange circumstances. From the looks of the wreckage, the ship didn't hit head-on. It came in at an angle right over those pinnacles of rock. How old would you say the ship was, sir? Judging by the fragments and what's left of the instruments, I'd say it was at least a hundred years old. A hundred years old? Smoke and rockets, what a story this old ship could tell. Hey, Commander, somebody or, or something shooting at us. It's a spaceship coming in low. This time they won't miss. Come on, get out of here before they fire again. Yeah, but Commander, why would they fire on us? If we don't get under that ledge of rock, we'll never find out. We'll return in just a moment with today's Space Patrol adventure, The Treasure of Planetoid 60. Say, gang, did you ever try a cereal that tasted so good you felt like bouncing right up to the ceiling like a spring? Well, if you haven't, try Rice Chex and Wheat Chex. So good you just can't seem to get them out of the package fast enough. Mmm, mmm. And when you see that bowl full of bite-sized biscuits looking up at you, why, man, oh, man, you can hardly wait until you pour on the milk and sprinkle on the sugar. And wow, when you dive into Chex... (laughs) Well, sir, that was you bouncing right up to the ceiling because you like your Chex so much. So try them, Space Patrollers, Rice Chex. Delicious, nutritious, bite-sized, shredded rice biscuits. Hollow inside so they can fill up with milk. And Wheat Chex. A bite-sized treat made of energy-rich whole wheat. The super cereals that help to supercharge you. Rice Chex, Wheat Chex. The only cereals in the universe that bring you a magic space picture inside of every package. And now, today's Space Patrol adventure, The Treasure of Planetoid 60. Commander Corey and Cadet Happy have just finished inspecting space patrol units on the planet Neptune. Now, in the Neptune City headquarters, Buzz is showing Happy a fragment of bluish rock streaked with bands of violet. It's an odd-looking rock, sir. What is it? It's called transplutite, Happy. It was brought here by a gem expert named Hollister. He wanted it examined by the space patrol scientists. Transplutite? I don't think I ever heard of it. Very few people have. Outside of a few specimens in museums, no transplutite has been seen in nearly a hundred years. Hollister says that yesterday two men came into his shop with several chunks of this rock. He couldn't believe his eyes. The men refused to say where they got it. Well, why did Hollister bring it here? Uh, does he think it was stolen from a museum? Yes. We're checking by space of phone now with museums all over the solar system. Well, then this transplutite must be pretty valuable. Extremely. But not because of the rock itself. It's the Arcturium in it that makes it valuable. That's another new one, Commander. And you've never heard of Captain Hartog? No, sir. Well, Captain Hartog was a scientist and space explorer who lived about a century ago. After a long space trip, he showed up on the planet Earth with samples of this blue rock and some strange new gems that he'd ground into microscopic cutting tools. Uh Uh-huh. The amazing thing about these gems was that they emitted radiation when a small current was sent through them. They provided their own light for the most delicate analysis under a microscope. Oh, I see. Instantly, there was a tremendous demand for the gems, and Captain Hartog was the only one who could supply them. When he was asked where he got them, he just laughed and said, from Arcturus. Arcturus? Well, that's impossible. Of course. Arcturus is a star 32 light years away, but the gem was called Arcturium just the same. The rock itself was named Transplutite, indicating that it came from beyond Pluto. Well, didn't Captain Hartog ever know where he got it? No. No, he blasted off on a space flight, and nothing was ever heard from him again. No trace of his ship was ever found. Naturally, that cut off the supply of Arcturium. No substitute has ever been discovered. Well, is there Arcturium in this piece of rock, Commander? Yes. Well, here's a chance to use your new Space Patrol microscope. Happy, you got it with you? Oh, yes, sir. Right here in my pocket. All right. Now, focus it on one of those violet streaks in the rock. Oh, this sure is a terrific little microscope, sir. Uh, I've been making fingerprint tests with it just for fun. Well, you'll find it comes in handy in hundreds of ways, Happy. For a long time, we've needed a small, compact, powerful microscope... I'll bet I turned down a dozen models till the security lab came up with this one. That's a beauty, sir. It's light and still plenty rugged. Uh, I've got the microscope focused, sir. Now, just watch that violet streak. 
Mm. Hey, it looks like tiny sparks of light are shooting through the rock. That's the action of the Arcturium, Happy. You could see it better if the rock were polished. And if electric current were applied, the Arcturium would really glow. Should I hook it up to a current, sir? Now, let's wait till we get over to Hollister's shop. I want to return the sample to him before Corbo and Rupp get there. Corbo and Rupp? Oh, they're the two men who brought in the transplutite. If one of their samples is missing, they're going to get suspicious. That is, if they're up to something crooked. Let's get over there right away. All right, Hollister, where is it? Oh. Quit stalling. We left four rock samples here, and we've only got three. Where's the other one? Come on, Hollister, what are you up to? Rupp, what are you doing? Trying to make him talk. Well, leave him alone. Take your hands off him. Might as well, I guess. Must have hit him a little too hard. He's unconscious. That was a stupid thing to do. But, Corbo, what business has he got holding out on one of our samples? Maybe he wasn't sure what it was and turned it over to another mineral expert. Why didn't he say so? Professional pride, maybe. Anyway, we'd better shut this door to his back office and get out of here. You got the other samples? Yeah. Here in this case. Come on, let's go. You, uh, sure you searched every place here in the outer office? Yeah, even the safe. It was unlocked. The blast off for Saturn to have the samples tested there. And next time, Rupp, no strong arm stuff. All right, Corval, let up, will you? Oh, well, good afternoon, gentlemen. Hi. Where's Mr. Hollister? Oh, uh, he stepped out for a few minutes. Uh, just wait, he'll be right back. Well, we're in sort of a hurry, if you'll excuse us. Oh, just a minute. Are you Frank Rupp and Kent Corbo? Us? Why? Well, what if we are? Well, you fit the description Mr. Hollister gave me. Then this must be one of your samples. Why, this, that's right. It's transplutite, all right, with Arcturium in it. Oh, fine. Uh, may I have it, please? Oh, wait till Mr. Hollister returns. Uh, where did you get these samples? We don't actually know where they came from. We got them from a space prospector we met on Jupiter. We're uh, acting as his agent, so to speak. You came directly here to Neptune from Jupiter? That's right, Commander. Well, if this prospector friend of yours has discovered a source of Arcturium and wants to keep it a secret, that's his affair and yours. Fine, then uh, we'll be going along. Commander, what's that? It came from the back room. Check on it, Happy. Yes, sir. You two stay where you are. Sorry, Commander. We've got other plans. Hey, what are you doing? And this will take care of you, cadet. That satchel of rocks makes a nice weapon, Corbo. Come on, Rep. Let's get out of here, quick. Oh, Happy. Happy, are you all right? Commander, we get away? Yeah. We've only been out a couple of minutes. I'll call Spaceport and have a guard put on the ship. Uh, check the back room, Happy. They've probably done something to Hollister. Yes, sir. You'll take care of him, then we'll head for the Spaceport. Here's Corbo's ship, Happy. It looks like we got here ahead of him. They may have seen the guards and got scared off. We'll get them. First, we'll examine the ship. Hop the ladder, Happy. Yes, sir. Leave the hatch open after we get in the airlock. Right, Commander. Oh, wait, Hat. Look at this white dust on the floor of the airlock. Hmm? I wonder where they picked that up. Certainly not at any regular spaceport. We'll gather up a sample of it later and examine it under the microscope. Now, let's go to their spacesuit locker. Open the inner hatch. Boy, they sure tracked in a lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. By the marks on the floor, they were wearing spacesuits. That's why I want to check the locker. Spacesuits? That means they've recently been on one of the moons, and this white stuff is probably powdered pumice. That alone isn't much of a clue. There are a lot of moons partly covered with pumice. Now, here's the locker. Now, let's examine the boots on these spacesuits. Hey, they must have been wading in pumice halfway up to their knees. Get your microscope out, Happy. I'll scrape off a sample. Yes, sir. Mere magnification may not tell us too much, but it might tell us if it's worthwhile making a more thorough test at the Neptune City Lab. The microscope's all ready, sir. All right, I'll smear a little of this powder on the slide. Slip it into the stage clamp. How to look through the lens. Hmm. Right, it's in focus now, Commander. There's some dark flakes of something mixed with the powder. Hey, you want to see? Oh, thanks. Mm-hmm. It'll take a spectrographic analysis at the lab to tell us exactly what those flakes are. Yeah, then we'll have a line on where Rupp and Corbo have been. We'll also disconnect their vector computer and take it with us. The vector computer? Yes. If they didn't clear the settings after they landed, it may show us exactly where they were before landing on tune. Let's take these spacesuits. Back. 
Corbo, look at our ship. They got guards around it. Corey must have come to and alerted the spaceport. We better get away from here quick. Yeah, we'll get out of the city. How? In a surface car. We'll drive out through the surface locks at the north side of the atmosphere shell. The space phone wrapped to pick us up in a spaceship the other side of the hills. We we'll have to have spacesuits to transfer to the ship. Yeah, they're already in the surface car. Come on, Rep. We've got to get out of Neptune City before they put a guard at the surface locks. I just checked with the infirmary, sir. Mr. Hollister's okay, and he's on his way back to his shop. Good. Reports have come in from the museum's happy. No transplutite exhibits are missing. Well, I don't get it, sir. If Ruff and Corbo didn't steal the transplutite, why would they beat up Hollister and attack us? Uh, what have they got to be afraid of? I think I've got part of the answer, Happy. Ruff and Corbo apparently have stumbled onto something more than Arcturium-bearing rock. I think they've found out what happened to Captain Hartog. Wow. The lab has carefully analyzed those spacesuits we took from the ship. Remember those dark flakes in the powdered pumice? Yes, sir. They're bits of enamel, apparently scraped off of metal when Rupp and Corbo walked over it in their suits. Enamel that was once used to coat the interior of spaceships. But how does that connect up with Captain Hartog, sir? Because enamel of this type hasn't been used in 90 years. Of course, Rupp and Corbo might have been tramping around the wreck of another old hulk, but when they also show up with transplutite, there's only one conclusion. Well, then Hartog's ship was wrecked here inside the solar system. And if we only knew where. The vector computer from Corbo's ship gave us a clue. Corbo didn't come to Neptune directly from Jupiter. The formula for the vector curve indicates that they came from the direction of Planetoid 60. Planetoid 60? Yes. It's one of the thousands of planetoids that have never been officially observed at close range. Its orbit is so freakish that old 60 has been out of the regular space lanes for 50 years. That's where Hartog's ship crashed? And that's what we're going to find out. Let's get out to the spaceport. We're blasting off right away. Cut our velocity, Happy. Even at this distance, it won't take us long to completely circle the planetoid. Yes, sir. Sure is small. Not more than ten miles in diameter. Oh, I think I see something in the view scope, sir. Sort of a dark area on the white surface. Yeah, you're right. Increase the sensitivity. More. Hold it. It's a wrecked ship, Commander. What a crash that must have been. Chunks of the hull are scattered all over. We'll put on our spacesuits and set the ship down. I want to get a close look at that wreckage. All right, give me the controls, Rup. I'll take her into the landing. Oh, but look. There's a spaceship on the planet. We're right near the wreck. That's Corey's ship. Terra 5. How did he know this is where Hartog crashed? I don't know. This is a good chance to get rid of them. You mean blast a ship and leave them stranded here? No. Look, they're in spacesuits poking around the wreckage. They'll blast them with a space cannon and land. You blast off in Corey's ship. What for? We don't want anyone to find a trace of Corey's ship on that planetoid. When you're out in space, I'll join airlocks with Terra 5 and you come aboard. Then we'll cut Corey's ship loose. I get it. They'll find Corey's ship maybe, but they'll never know what happened to Corey. Right. We'll be able to keep searching Planetoid 60 for the rest of Hartog's treasure. All right. Train your gun sights on Corey. From the looks of the wreckage, me the ship didn't hit head on. It came in at an angle right over those pinnacles of rock. Yes, sir. Is it Hartog's ship, sir? I don't know, but by the fragments and what's left of the instruments, I'd say it was at least a hundred years old. Hey, look at this. The blue rock. A chunk of transplutite. Yeah, there's now more chunks scattered around. There must have been tons of it in the cargo hold. Commander, somebody's shooting at us. It's a spaceship coming in low. Corbo, quick, get under that overhanging sled. Yes, sir. We'll return to Space Patrol in just a moment. Hey, Space Patrollers, how would you like to go along with me into a hidden world? A world your eyes alone cannot see. What am I talking about? How can you do it? Well, I wish I could tell you this very moment. But until the end of today's Space Patrol program, this great, wonderful trip is a deep, dark secret. This much, however, I can tell you. To get into this hidden world, you need a magical scientific instrument, an official piece of Space Patrol equipment. It's a surprise for you from Commander Corey, a new and different surprise you'll really go for. So stand by, have pencil and paper ready, and be all set to hear this exciting, wonderful news at the end of today's Space Patrol adventure. 
And now, back to the treasure of Planetoid 60. Through some tiny fragments of enamel found clinging to the boots of a spacesuit, Commander Corey, with the help of the new Space Patrol microscope and other laboratory equipment, has partly solved a mystery. He has discovered that Captain Hartog, a space explorer of a century before, crashed his ship on Planetoid 60. While examining the wreckage, Buzz and Happy were attacked by Rupp and Corbo, who fired blasts at them from their space cruiser. Now the two criminals are hovering above the scene, looking for a trace of Buzz and Happy. Looks like we got him, Rupp. Not a trace of him. Yeah, that last blast not only finished him, but buried him. On the rock ledge, collapsed right on top of him. Nice, neat job. Nothing to tidy up. Except to get rid of Corey's ship. Get into a spacesuit, and I'll set our ship down. Okay. After I blast off in Terra 5, where do I head? Point it out toward the Pluto orbit. Then I'll join airlocks and bring you back aboard. Before you leave Corey's ship, cut on the automatic emergency signal on the space phone. That'll bring the space patrol after the ship. And no one will bother about Planetoid 60. Happy, can you hear me? Yes, sir. But very faintly. Are you all right? I think so, sir, but I can't move. I'm buried under a pile of rock. So am I, but I think I can work loose. There. My head and shoulders are out now. Lucky these helmets and suits are built to take a lot of punishment. I'll be free in a few seconds, Happy. Once you're able to move, these rocks aren't heavy. There isn't much gravity on this little planetoid. There. Now, Happy, we're... Oh, I see the top of your helmet. They sure came close with that space cannon. Now, I was sure that last blast was our finish. Evidently, Rupp and Corbel thought it was, too. Here, I'll roll these rocks away from around your helmet so I can grab you under the shoulders. There. Now, here we go. Thanks, Commander. Uh, better turn up the power on your suit transmitter, Happy. I can barely hear you. All right, sir. Is that any better? A little. It's all the way up. And you're pretty faint yourself. That fall of rock must have damaged our transmitters. Hey, Commander, our ship is gone. Rupp and Corbel are smarter than I thought. What do you mean, sir? It won't take the space patrol long to find the ship. There won't be anything to make anyone look for us here in Planetoid 60. And with our transmitters damaged... We're... Commander, we're stranded. Yes, until Rupp and Corbo come back. If they do. Well, they probably will. If they didn't intend to, there wouldn't have been any point in taking our ship instead of blasting it right here. Well, suppose they do come back. They'll finish us off if they see us. We'll take care of that when the time comes. Commander, look. One of the shots that Corbo and Rupp fired us hit the wreckage. Uh-huh. Churned it up worse than it was. Uh-oh. What's this? What's what, sir? This transparent plastic case. There's writing inside in a small lump of metal with a chain on it. It looks like some sort of a bracelet. Yeah, it's engraved. Captain Jules Hartog. What's the writing about, sir? It's dated January 15th, 2853. A hundred years ago. Hartog wrote this, Happy. Listen. This is written just before what may be my last voyage in space. When we found we were able, able to control, control our, our ship... ship. And that, that a crash, crash was inevitable. inevitable, we bailed out in our spacesuits. We drifted here four hours later. Now the three of us, Mowbray, Clayton, and myself, are about to blast off on an emergency space raft. Our hope of rescue is slight, but it is better to be out in space, headed for the unknown, than to wait on this planetoid for the inevitable end. We leave behind a treasure. With luck, we shall return to claim it ourselves. You who read this, perhaps are here by chance. Forgive us, then, if we selfishly decline to make it easy for you to obtain what we have discovered. ...by years of sacrifice and the risk of our lives. And assign Captain Jules Hartog. Three men in a tiny space raft. No wonder they were never found. And all this happened a hundred years ago, but well, I feel like it just happened. I can understand why they took the space raft rather than stay here. We're in the same fix, and we haven't got a space raft. At least Captain Hartog left us with something to do to pass the time. What's that, sir? Look for the treasure. I wonder how long it would take us to search this whole planetoid. Oh, several days, probably. You know, Happy, I've been wondering why Captain Hartog left this lump of metal here with his letter. Well, what kind of metal is it, sir? Uh, it looks like platinum. 
Happy, do you have your space patrol microscope where you can get at it? Yes, sir. It's in the belt pouch of my space suit. Well, let me have it. I want to take a look at these scratches. Yes, sir. Here it is. Thanks. You know, from the shape of this platinum lump, it just might be a model of this planetoid. Oh? Now, if I can get the scratch marks into focus. There. That was right, Happy. Captain Hartog left us a map, a map of Planetoid 60. What? There are letters here, letters so small they can't be seen without the microscope. Planetoid 60. There's a cross marked on the face of this tiny lump. Under it's the word cave. Cave? Then that must be where the treasure is. If we can pick out the spot where we are now, we ought to be able to locate the cave. See, over there to our left is a sort of knife-edged ridge of rock. To the right, three small pinnacles in a sort of triangle... Now, if there's something like that on the metal lump. Can you find it, sir? Yeah. Now, here it is. The cave is about a third of the way around the other side of the planetoid. Let's get going, Happy. Okay, Corbo. Before I left Corey's ship, I turned on the automatic emergency signal on the spacophone. You can cut the Terra 5 loose now. All right, Rup. By the time the space patrol picks up the signal and comes to investigate, we'll be thousands of DUs away. You sure it's safe to go back to Planetoid 60 right away? Sure. With Corey's ship out near the Pluto orbit, Planetoid 60 would be the last place they'd look for Corey. Then let's go back and load up all the transplutide we can find. I hear them in the airlock, sir. Yeah, then they finished loading the transplutite in the cargo hold. Now stand back on the other side of the hatch, Happy. Will they get clear inside the ship before we rush them? Yes, sir. Now we'll blast off and make a careful search of the planetoid at low altitude. Yeah, it won't take long to find them on this dinky hunk of rock. You're right, Rupp. It won't take long at all. Rupp, go for your ray gun. Oh, no, you Come don't. <coughs> Now, Corvo, does that convince you, or do you want some more? You got us, Corey. All right, Rupp. 
On your feet. Yeah, sure. Corbo, what did you do with my ship? Uh, it's heading out toward the Pluto orbit. The automatic distress signal on the space phone. I'll check on that with the receiver after I lock you men up. Incidentally, Corbo, I thought you might like to know that there's more Arcturium here than you ever dreamed of. Uh, what do you mean? He found a cave full of it. Yeah, and an astrogation chart of the planetoid where Hartog got it originally. You would have had a share of it, Corbo, if you'd played straight. Rupp and I figured Hartog used planetoid 60 as a storage base. But how'd you find the cave? We've been over this whole planetoid a dozen times with a fine-tooth comb. A fine-tooth comb? Well, that's where you made your mistake. You should have used the microscope. <laughs> An action preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol adventure in just a moment. Gang, here it is. The announcement you've been waiting for. The big new surprise Buzz Corey has for everybody. The surprise that'll give you a glimpse into a mysterious hidden world you've never seen before. Get pencil and paper set. Here's Buzz Corey with the entire story. Space Patrollers, this is your lucky day because now you can own an official Space Patrol microscope kit. Now, just think of all the important work the Space Patrol microscope did for us today. It showed us that there were enamel flakes mixed in that innocent-looking white powder. And it showed us that Captain Hartog had scratched a secret map on the top of a small lump of metal. Now you'll be able to examine all kinds of tiny particles and objects with your Space Patrol microscope, too. Wait till you get it. You'll agree the Space Patrol microscope is a mighty important instrument to have. Think of the fun. Think of all you can learn. An honest-to-goodness scientific instrument with the power to magnify objects 15 times. Gang, you can see the wing of a butterfly 15 times actual size. The feeders of an insect 15 times actual size. The texture of paper, the petals of flowers, human hair, grains of sand, all 15 times actual size. And imagine, imagine seeing the living creatures in a drop of water. You can do it with a Space Patrol microscope. It's made of sturdy green plastic, and it's so compact you can carry it in your pocket. Small but powerful, just five inches high, yet it magnifies objects 15 times actual size. But remember, we're offering you an entire kit, the Space Patrol microscope. Plus four clear acetate slides for mounting specimens. Plus a fifth slide containing a fiery atomic particle. Gang, the lens tube is not cheap cardboard. It's real plastic. It will not wear out or slip out. Now don't wait. Send for this exciting new Space Patrol microscope kit today. Just buy a box of rice checks or wheat checks. Then with your name and address, send 25 cents in coin and rice checks or wheat checks box top to Space Patrol. Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. This offer good only in the USA and may be withdrawn at any time. That's Space Patrol, Box 686, St. Louis, Missouri. And now, a preview of next week's exciting Space Patrol venture. Buzz and Happy are on a space platform off the Mars orbit investigating the theft of supplies from the emergency space station. Right now, they're walking down a corridor toward the control compartment. The automatic camera in the control compartment should have a film of all ships that docked at the platform, Happy. Commander, what's that? A meteor warning system. A meteor is on a collision course. Well, can't we cut on the power and move the platform? It's too late. We're hit. Join us again next week for the exciting story, The Winged Spies of Venus, when wheat checks, rice checks... And good hot Ralston again present Space Patrol. <laughs> Special bulletin for boys and girls in Louisville, Kentucky, Huntington, West Virginia, Boston, Massachusetts, and Heartland, Vermont. Buzz Corey's own space battle cruiser, the Ralston Rocket, will be in your area next week. Don't miss it, the Ralston Rocket. <laughs> Space Patrol, created by Mike Moser, starring Ed Kemmerer as Commander Corey, and Lynn Osborne as Ed Happy, was written by Lou Houston, produced and directed by Larry Robertson, executive producer Mike Devery. Other players were Ken Mayer, Norman Jolly, and Bela Kovach. Dick Tufel speaking. Now, don't forget to tune in next Saturday and every Saturday when Wheat Checks, Rice Checks, and Good Hot Ralston again present... Space Patrol! Be sure to see another exciting Space Patrol story on your local ABC television station. Consult your local paper for time and channel. 
This program is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. Space Patrol came to you transcribed from Hollywood. This is ABC Radio Network.